And then another question from Rain saying, for either or both of you, what are your thoughts on tracking through compressors, EQs, and effects, or is it best to always record dry? Uh, what's your angle, Louise? I hate myself dry. Like, I just can't do it. So I always record my vocals through effects. Um, obviously, you take them off after to make sure they're good when you're comping, but I tend to just always have reverb on everything because it's the way I like to do things. But that's just for my voice. When I'm tracking other people, I like to do them just a hint of reverb. Don't often use a compressor. I just like to listen for the performance and then treat it after. It tends to be how I work. Cool, cool. And then at my side, on the pure engineering side, uh, in general for me, if I'm engineering a session I'm producing, it tends to be like you're moving as fast as possible. So I like to keep my chains as simple as possible. Uh, so you have fewer potential points of failure. Um, with vocals, I do have a chain that's just like a, a Neve based preamp and a tube tech, uh, sorry, compressor. And I just know the gain structure on that really well. So it's a case of like lifting up the vocal into that spot. Um, and then in terms of like recording with effects, like if the actual instrument or if your source sound, like the identity of that sound is with the effect and, you know, Darcy's guitars are the perfect example there. Yeah. Then you dial in the sound for what that's supposed to be creatively. Uh, but then we have like Matt Robertson's situation where he just has a matrix set up and he presses a button and it's always recording since dry through a pedal and then a reverb return as well so that you can i mean that's a beautiful system so you can just like really quickly just change the balance and hit record um and, but then you still have like a bit of flexibility at the mix if say i'm doing stuff like sometimes if i'm building a beat on the modular or if i'm have the time like the luxury of time to really really track drums then having something going in parallel like i have a um a whole network that splits a microphone through a bunch of guitar pedals. So I like to have that running in parallel and that will often dictate the way that you tune your instrument um, and it can become like a creative thing. Uh, I mentioned it a couple of times, there's a band called Dizzy who have an album called Baby Teeth that I produced and I really loved recording the guitars on that. Uh, and a lot of that is actually pedal performance on the tails of like recordings. Uh, but that was also knowing that we were like, we were just recording guitars, all the mics were set up, we were cool. I could trust the guitar player. Um, do you know what I mean? We had enough time to kind of do that properly. So the bottom rule is if you're moving fast, keep it simple. Um, and if you're diving deep, then, you know, if you need things for texture, again, if I'm like recording drum machines and stuff off the modular, they'll soften sound kind of whack directly, or sorry, drum machines in the modular world, then I'll sometimes like parallel up a bunch of stuff, but that's almost, where you're kind of crossing over your sound design. So, you know. But the, the great thing in this day and age, I think as well, is that we can capture sound so purely super close to the source and then do a lot of like what would otherwise be considered good engineering after the fact. Whereas like when you're recording to tape, like you had to have all that right because you have noise floors and if your gain structure is wrong, then you're like legitimately screwed, basically. Um, yeah, and then Louise, like you're saying, just having like the, um, the ability to give people what they want to hear in their headphones when they're recording as well is important. Yeah, and I just use like a vintage Valhalla verb uh, when I'm tracking because it sounds so good. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that video. A couple of more links here for some talks we think you'll like. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and otherwise head over to completeproducer.net so that you can connect with other music making geniuses from all over the world. We'll see you there.